What's up, guys? My name is Mad Squash 924 Welcome back to another episode of some Dragon Age Origins. This is now part 28 of our Let's Play thus far. And we are going to begin today's episode by getting to know Wynn. Right, Wynn? Oh, it's been a long day. Rest. Rest would be welcome. Yeah, you probably should get some rest. The events over at the Circle of Magi were most troubling. Yes, yes, of course. I am just a little weary. As you may have noticed, I'm no spring chicken. Um, I'm sure there's some life in your old bones right now. Um, you seem fine. <laughs> Thank you. You're very kind to say so. But in all honesty, I do not know how many years I have left in me. I have lived for such a long time, but there is always something else to do. And I have to keep going in order to do it. I think I will be glad when I am done. Well, you're not allowed to be done just yet. I'm gonna need you on this journey. Well, your journey has just begun for me. Oh, no, I'm not the sort of person that leaves things unfinished. I'll see this through, I promise. Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Well, um, there was the issue with Connor that we're going to. Other than that, um, not that I can recall off the bat. There was, well, there was an issue when we, when I picked up Shale. But we dealt with those as well. Ah, yes, Connor, of course. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. Yes, I suppose. To be honest, I imagine it might be worse. Being a mage, turning to an abomination, and that the fact that you're also a Grey Warden. <laughs> imagine how powerful that abomination must be. I find that a bit unsettling. Yes, I suppose I see your point. One slip. All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone. Replaced by madness. And there is no turning back. Or at least that's what they say. So they say, but do you think you can turn back? Of late, I have begun to wonder if... if there is any way an abomination can be... cured. Or, if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity, their humanity. Hmm. Well, if one retains their humanity, then one is not simply an abomination, now are they? Yes. It is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. Irving told me about how you became a Grey Warden, and that unpleasant incident that occurred prior to your departure from the Circle. Oh yes, with you, you're talking about fucking Jowen. Yeah, he's a, he's a character, alright. None right. other. I respect the decision you made, and the way you handled Thank it. Thank you. And it did not seem to affect Duncan's desire to recruit you. But that aside, or should it? you're a Grey Warden now, and perhaps I presume too much by saying this, but the Circle is proud of you. Of course they're proud of me. Well, I turned in uh, an apostate, frankly. Of course the apostate got away, but eh, what can one do? Hmm. You know, other than my power, my lust for knowledge, I wonder what Irving saw in me that made him recommend me for the Grey Wardenship. Do not squander this time trying to explain why Irving picked you. Accept it, and be the Grey Warden you're supposed to be. Sometimes it gives me comfort to think that everything will end up the way it's supposed to. That it will be all right. You were chosen. You survived the joining when others did not. Perhaps it True. was meant to be. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? <laughs> mean to me? Well, let me think about that for a moment. Hmm. 
I don't know. I mean, obviously, it means something important. What does it mean to you, I suppose? I just wanted to know what you thought being a Grey Warden was about. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others. About serving right. all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. Yes, that's true. I serve as some sort of protector, one would say, I suppose. As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men. And you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus, it is you who serves, not they. Oh. Well. <laughs> I suppose that makes sense. However, I would rather be served instead, but obviously it's going to happen. Oh, but you are. Your king serves you, does he not? A good king. Oh, really? A true king who cares for his land. Uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. Well, yes, of course it does, but currently Ferelden has no real king of Ferelden, now does it? Caelan is dead and no gain. Well, he's. I assume he's going to try to take the throne, but who knows what's going to happen. Right now, it's Kaelin's wife that's going to be in line of the throne. Hmm. Well, regardless... Many kings around here are definitely tyrants, especially nowadays. And the country suffers for it. If you live apart from others, and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish, but if you have power, influence, and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond. But I've lectured enough for today. I should stop before I wear out my welcome. Now I insist I would rather hear more. What's on your mind? Well, tell me, are you feeling better now? Oh, yes, and thank you for asking. I'm feeling much better today. Great. It's been ten minutes, but, well, you know how it be. Ten minutes can change a person. Ah, just making sure everyone's all well and ready. Well, thank you for your kindness, my dear. It certainly warms these rickety old bones. What's on your mind? You know, I was, I was thinking about... Being a Grey Warden. Mm. Is something troubling you? Well, I guess, in a way, a lot of people expect a lot from me, and I'm not always going to be able to give what everybody is seeking. It's weird, considering that I've always wanted the power of other spells and knowledge from other books, but... And then I'm forced to put that on the back burner because I have to serve all these people. Have to get ready for this blight that's going to happen. In a way, I'm becoming different, and I don't know how I feel about it. No one said it would be easy. You are one of the two surviving Grey Wardens in Ferelden. You defend all of us, and much rests on your shoulders. It may not mean much to you, but thank you for having the courage to continue to fight. Well... To be fair, I didn't really have a choice, Wim. You always have a choice. You could have turned away and ignored the Blight until it claimed you. But you didn't. And that gives me hope. Have you heard much about the Grey Wardens of old? I mean, I know some of them, of what Alistair has told me, I suppose. It was said that watching the Wardens ride in on their white griffins was enough to rouse a weary heart and put the dance back in the step of an old man. The Grey Wardens were powerful, feared and respected. But they also inspired the common people. I remember a tale that was told to me many years ago. Yeah, go on, I would, I would much like to hear it. The Blight had ravaged the land for months, and the armies of the Great Kings had amassed for one last stand as the sun burst through the clouds that 
boiled and churned in the dark sky above, it illuminated a vast, seething horde of darkspawn, with the archdemon at its head. And it was then, when courage seemed to fail, and all lost to death and despair, that the Grey Wardens came. They arrived with the beating of wings like mighty war drums, and stood before the armies of men. Well... What happened next? The Grey Wardens, grim and fearless, marched forth, ever between the men and the encroaching darkspawn. They formed a shield of their own bodies and held that line until the archdemon was dead and the last darkspawn lay trampled in the dirt, and then, demanding neither reward nor recognition for their sacrifice, the Grey Wardens departed. When the clouds finally rolled back and the sun shone full upon the blighted ground, the great kings knew that they had lost no men, and none of their blood had been spilled. Hmm. Tell me again, when did this happen? This is a tale about no battle the Grey Wardens have fought, and yet about them all. They have always defended us from the Darkspawn, taking losses so we do not have to. People may have forgotten over the centuries, but nothing has changed. This knowledge has been blessing and burden to Grey Warden's past. And now, it shall be your blessing. And your burden. Hmm. What's on your mind? I suppose as a Grey Warden, I'll never lead a normal life again, will I? No, you won't. Hmm. Well, that's... Well... I guess I didn't know what to expect, but it's not the most comforting of thoughts. You wonder sometimes, don't you? If your life would be better if you weren't who you are. Oh yes, quite a bit actually. When I was a young woman in the tower, I came to the realization that the circle would be my life, and I would know no other. Family, love, a simple life. These were things that others took for granted, that I would never have. Yeah, I know. Grass is always greener on the other side, it's so they say. And they're not wrong. It made me very moody. All I could think of was being trapped in that tower with no way out and no end in sight. I started hating my life and myself, and one night I found myself in the tower's chapel. I was seeking refuge, maybe answers. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but the Chantry doesn't offer much either. I must have looked tearful or made some noise, because the revered mother came out and decided to speak to me. And because I had no one else to talk to, I talked to her. I must have said many silly things. But she told me that the Maker puts us all on our paths for a reason. And fighting our intended course is what causes so much anguish. Well... And I suppose that made you feel better, yes? Huh. I thought the old biddy was full of rubbish. I was fifteen, maybe sixteen, and I knew everything. So I left, but I always found my way back to that chapel. And as the years passed, I began to see the truth of her words. We were supposed to be polar opposites, mage and priest. But we weren't. There was much about us that was the same. Elaborate. How do you suppose that's true? However, priests do choose to be priests of the Chantry. The majors are forced to become in the circle. We don't have a choice in the matter. We're forced to live or we die because they kill us if we don't join. And that's, well, as you know, it's not the most pleasurable of lives. Not all priests choose their path. Some children are given to the Chantry to raise and become initiates. The revered mother had lived in the Chantry all her life, as I had been in the tower for all of mine. She taught me that you can find your family in the people around you, that you can love your work and find fulfillment in duty. And there <laughs> is joy even in self-sacrifice. If you put others before yourself, then their well-being is yours, and their happiness is your happiness. 
Look, I hate to break it to you, but uh, would you hate me if I said that I think you're so full of shit? Because the, the Chantry never gave me anything, and I never saw a family in anybody in there. Not until I made it here. It's a little different now, but back then, hell no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. As I mentioned, I once thought the same thing of someone else. You can scream and cry and be angry about life as a Grey Warden, or... You can accept it, and allow yourself to see the good in it. This is your choice. What's on your mind? Um, I'd like to ask you something about the circle. I will answer to the best of my ability. Excellent. So why didn't you want to stay at the tower? I mean, I suppose the adventure is great, but... I mean, the circle does need to rebuild. The circle is in good hands. Irving knows what to do, and he doesn't need me underfoot. For now, I will support those that battle the Darkspawn. I do feel I left things unfinished in Ostagar. There is so much left to do, and I would be part of it. Well, for what it's worth, I'm glad that you are with me. And it's comforting. The Grey Wardens, all two of you, need all the help you can get. Mm -hmm. I will see this through to the bitter end, and after that, if I am still left standing, then I will return to the circle. Well, that's the idea, and I'm pretty sure you'll return. But I think that might be up to you in the end. Perhaps. What's on your mind? I am more circle stuff, you know how it be. I will answer to the best of my ability. So, how did you become a mage? I imagine it, it was the same process as I. People don't become mages. They are born mages. Yes, I know. just surfaces later. Mm -hmm. But you are asking how I ended up at the Circle. I was brought there by the Templars, just like many of the other apprentices. I don't remember very much. I was very young then. Yep. Yep. I don't even remember my family. <laughs> what about yours? Do you remember them? I didn't have a family. I never knew my real parents. My earliest memory was of hiding in a hayloft on a farm, trying to keep warm. I was found, and the farmer's wife was kind enough not to send me away. But they had children of their own, and I was never made to feel welcome. The eldest son was the worst. He was always calling me a stray, and throwing anything he could get his hands on at me. And I don't know how it happened, but one day, he just found his hair on fire. Fortunately, there was a large trough nearby. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. It sounds like he very much well deserved it. He ran screaming, dripping head and all, to his mother. I was shut up in the barn with a bowl of water and a crust of hard bread. The Templars arrived several mornings later. And what happened once you arrived at the tower? I'll never forget the moment the Templars led me into the entrance hall of the tower. I had never seen anything so grand in my life. I stopped being afraid then. I knew I was home. Hmm. It's a fantastic story. Well, that's about all there is to my tale. That's how I came to the circle. Well, it's been a while since I left the tower. It has been almost a year, hasn't it? Do you miss the tower at all? Well... Yeah, there are things that I miss from the tower. Mostly the reading of old spells and incantations. <laughs> you can take a mage out of the circle, but you can't take the circle out of the mage. <laughs> or so Irving used to say. He was joking, but there is some truth to the statement. A mage never really leaves the circle, and for the rest of your life you will be seen as a circle mage. Well, I think they probably see me more as a Grey Warden now, but, yeah. But you will always be a mage, especially in the eyes of others. You represent both mages and Grey Wardens, and your actions may reflect well or badly on both groups. Remember that. Yes, it's true. It is a double-edged sword. Yes, you're right. I should keep that in mind. Thank you. Oh, but listen to me go on. <laughs> you start a conversation, and I just run away with it, don't I? Mm. 
Well, at least you don't repeat yourself like all the other old people, especially the ones at the Chantry. Oh, yes. One must be thankful for small mercies. What's on your mind? I don't know. I will answer to the best of my ability. Apparently nothing. And that is all we're going to be doing here. And let's get the hell out of this place. That was cool. We talked to everybody. Um, Shale uh, didn't have anybody... Well, didn't have anything to say. I checked with her off camera just to make sure. Oh, I didn't talk to Kabuto. Your dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. Well, yes. I mean... Well, he will fell our enemies with his stench, I suppose. That's one way of looking at it. That may be so. But all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Yeah, go for it. I don't care. He is a... I mean, he does stink. But, yeah, go for it. Excellent. I will get my soaps, and the dog shall have his bath after supper. Excellent. Okay, we're good. Let us move on. Let's bring Wynn. Yes. Let's bring Morgan. Indeed. And I would normally bring Leliana. Yes. However, we're going back to Redcliffe, and I don't think we're going to be looting anything, like any lockboxes or anything while we're there. So bringing the most amount of mages possible is probably the best thing to do for Connor, right? Makes sense. And they both have levels, I see. Um, ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -dum -dum. um all right, let's go. Yes, except for Elden. Here we go. Let's head back to Redcliffe Castle in particular. Meanwhile, in Denerim... I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know. But they will act against you. I have arranged for a... a solution. With your leave. The Antivan Crows send their regards. An assassin? Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best. <laughs> <laughs> and the most expensive. Just get it done. Tim Curry, and the actor that plays is Ezio. I don't remember his name. Two good choices. Meanwhile, we're being talkative. Oh boy, I wonder how this is gonna work out. Oh boy, you're done. Let's get the thing. Attack ready. As you say, it's begun. 
Excellent. Done and done. Oh, there's another. As you say. There's so many. Let's loot around first and then we'll level people up. Unfortunately, we don't have Leliana with us, so we can't exactly do all the looting that I like to be doing, but I assume we're not going to be in Redcliffe Castle very long. You know? I'd be surprised if we were. Ha, huh, that sucks. We'll take it though. A dagger made out of viridium. And another such a thing. Another shield. Alright, let's level people up, shall we? Alright, Morgan. You need some more stuff. What do you exactly need? Let's just check. Um, these are irrelevant. I just want to see what's in here so we can give you some stuff. What do we want to work with you? Obviously, you need the mage things. You probably want your shifter crap. I don't think being a shifter is very good in my personal taste. But we can probably go through the entropy route for her. If that's true, I need to see what she actually needs. She needs more magic. Um, that's for certain. Um, let's give her a 30. Um, let's put two in the con because she needs a little more health. And this is her mana pool, I believe. Yes, mana pool. Um, expert herbalism or more combat training. Mm, that's probably more helpful, realistically. Um, sleep sounds cool. Death magic. That's what sounded... That's what sounded drawn to me. While Act of the Kessler draws in nearby entropic energies, draining residual life force from any dead enemy nearby to heal the caster. Hmm. That's cool. Oh, hostile targets in the target area fall asleep. Okay. What's this? Oh, okay. This is just a debuff. I like that. That's pretty dope. Huh. I like that too. Yeah. Let us give her tactics a little tweak. Um, Enemy near visible. I want the enemy that is... I kind of want the one that's most furthest away, actually. But I don't think you can set it to that. So nearest visible is fine. Instead of doing that, use the hex. That's okay, that's okay. Um, Mind Blast is fine. You can still keep going with that. Instead of lightning, I want you to use the misdirection hex. And do you have any active abilities? No. Not that I want you to use. Vulnerability Hex also sounds great. Um, what else do we have to work with here? I don't think we need the Drain Life. Because we're going to be healing all the time. So that makes sense. Affliction Hex. Misdirection Hex. Okay. We're just going to have you casting debuffs on everybody. You could be our debuffer. Save that. Alistair, what do you got, friend? Um, let's just pump it on the strength for the moment. Because I got to see what you need to work with. 
Um, these actually require strength. That requires dexterity as well, though. 26 dex. You do not have. We can actually put this all into that. And then if we do this. You gotta be level 12, however. You're gonna need 32 strength for that. 32. Okay, so yeah, we probably should do that instead. Um, we'll give you some combat tactics so we can decide to do more things for you, which is, sounds great. And we'll give you assault. And then I'm going to give you shield tactics. Catch becomes proficient enough with a shield to defend from all angles so the attacker no longer benefits from flanking strikes. Sounds awesome. Love that. And let's edit him a little bit as well. So enemy, um, nearest visible. I want you to use the ability assault, I believe is what you just acquired. So let's see, we are using this. We're using shield pummel. We're using overpower. And I want you to use assault. Every one of those things I want you to do. What else do you have for abilities? Just those four. Hmm, do I want you to activate any of those? That's a good question. Probably not. Self. Hmm. Shield cover, shield defense, shield wall. I guess shield defense. Um, I, w I want you to do shield defense when your health is like a 50. We'll save that. I gotta check what shield defense does. There we go. Okay, why isn't that scrolling? Don't know. There we go. Shield defense. Maybe I want shield wall instead. Um, adding a significant bonus to armor and a greater likelihood of shrugging off missiles attacks, but at a cost of reduced damage. Ah, this character is immune to direct knockdown attacks. Okay, so yeah, we'll do that instead. Shield wall for Alistair. Yeah, and when your health is at 50, you can use that. Shield wall. In fact, when it's like at, um, mm, do 25. Because I want you to be tanky enough to take some of those few hits before I can heal you. And then you can heal on top of that as well. Yep. That sounds good. Or, hear me out. When your... I want you to deactivate that. When your health becomes... Um... When your health becomes 100%, I want you to deactivate shield wall. That way you can actually switch... You can switch back and forth between the two. Yeah, that's a good idea. What do you guys think? I think it's a great idea. All right. Anything good for you in here? Nope. And 5.2 sucks compared to what Leliana uses. Awesome. Well then. I think this is a good spot for us to end today's episode of Dragon Age Origins. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode. If you guys have, make sure you guys leave a like, leave a comment. Tell me you guys think of today's episode. And if you're new to my channel or haven't watched me for a little while and you haven't done so as of yet, feel free to subscribe to me, MadSquash924, and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified of my latest videos. On the next episode, we're going to Redcliffe Castle to free Connor from his uh, possession from the demon. And we'll see you guys then. Goodbye.